1988, Australia's bicentenary. It's being billed as a year of celebration, of course, and a year of prosperity, a coming of age for our young nation and its egalitarian traditions. But what's really in store? To help us find out, prominent astrologist Milton Black. Good morning. Morning, and Richard. And tarot card reader and psychic Simon Turnbull. Good morning to both of you. Good morning, Richard. Well, to both of you, is Australia in for a good year, 1988? Definitely. A very good year. Astrologically speaking, if we can look at it firstly, Jupiter passes through Taurus next year, first time for 12 years. Consequently, this is the financial sector of Australia's horoscope. We are going to see possibly one of Australia's greatest internal economic uh, years for some time to come. Mr Keating and Mr Hawke would uh, thank you for that. Yes, well, as a matter of fact, uh, we're going to learn some valuable fisc uh, fiscal lessons throughout 1988, and this will be because of Keating's uh, policies and the Hawke government's policies for okay. 1988 as well. Go straight to Parliament House where you'll get knighted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simon, to you. Well, what do you Bob think? Hawke, his, uh, his whole undercurrent idea of world government or eventual world government, um, which will start to take shape more next year, we're getting into um, the realms of silliness here, aren't we? Well, no, not really, because we're really just divided by territorial boundaries, which we call countries, and uh, the whole... <laughs> the, the economy is... I see. That's what it says there, you see. <laughs> and so that's, uh, that's, that's going to t start to take shape more next year, uh, in terms of being more open about it. World governments around the corner. Yes, 20 years. Remember, you heard it first here on 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll have to back you up a little bit, Simon. I still believe that uh, after the year 2000, we'll see independence here uh, in Australia. We won't come under the crown as we see it now. And uh, Australia is leaning that way. Even Hawke has uh, great expectations for independence, uh, possibly you, after the year 2000. You mean a republic? A republic. We are yeah. independent. Yes, yes, a republic independence. All right, what about home loan interest rates? Let's come back to Earth. Right, well, as far as the home loans are concerned, I'm predicting a, an increase in interest rates, possibly from March onwards of next year. Now, this is because of the uncertainty of the Australian dollar over the Christmas period. And uh, there will be a, a spendthrift situation. P uh, public spending will be very high over Christmas. Cos consequently, inflationary trends will cause interest rates to rise uh, from March of next year, but not total. You think we'll all go mad with our Christmas shopping oh, this absolutely. year? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's going to be a very big... Because uh, it's been a retail. tight year, everyone's yeah. going to say, let's go out and go mad right. because, you know... There's going to be a lot of spending, a good retail year for retailers. But uh, interest rates will fluctuate throughout the year. Uh, I'm not anticipating interest rates like 1987. Uh, it will uh, fluctuate considerably throughout the year. All right. What do you see for Bob Hawke with a tarot card this year? Right. Or next year? Well, so. as far as uh, personally, he's going to have a lot... Uh, he needs a lot of patience for his projects to take shape, um, but he's going to really uh, take Australia to the fore, um, and he's going to be counted as possibly one of the top five most influential political figures in the in the world next year, because of what I mentioned earlier, and also um, because of Australia's role in 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 bringing the uh, in the downplay of the economy, or you know, in the revision of the economy, and there'll be more independence, uh, which uh, so I agree with Milton, um, but possibly not officially straight away but um, uh, Bob, Bob Hawke's definitely going to have a stronger year than, than, than he, he did this year although this wasn't a bad year either. What about Sir Joe who's had a bad year? Finished. Simple. Never Finished. heard of again? No. He'll uh, stick around for the uh, bicentenary and expo as uh, perhaps a few guest appearances but Joe's had it. Um, he's not going to return uh, in any great format as far as uh, politically speaking and astrologically speaking. What about uh, Charles and Di? What's happening there? Well, that's interesting. I don't know what Simon comes well, up with here. But, uh, yeah, with Charles and Di, the situation is um, that he is emotionally uh, um, a little down because of his situation. Uh, as we know, it, the fact that he's not king and so forth, and it's just kind of a medium, a median role. Um, but I don't feel that the situation is going to be anything like uh, the bad publicity they've been getting. Exactly. I've got to agree with that. Yeah. See, uh, Saturn and Uranus have been passing his Mars on the uh, natal horoscope. That is completed now. It's finished. Uh, we're going to see uh, a more togetherness with uh, Di and Charles over 1988-89. As a matter of fact, I'll predict Di will fall pregnant again. And I do feel she'll possibly go to the Stork Factory early next year, probably around about May, June. <laughs> Colourful phrase. Yes. The yeah. Stork Factory. Yes, because because it certainly indicates that the media has um, given them a hard time over 1987 because of these bad conjunctions that they've had on their horoscopes. But uh, Di is a very independent lady. She has Sagittarius on the Ascendant and uh, uh, also um, 
Scorpio uh, on Charles's horoscope, he uses Scorpio with Leo on the ascendant, makes him incredibly independent too. And of course, this is where this, uh, this clash comes. But I think it's the in-laws and the outlaws is where the main problem is, not so much... Uh, All right, well, dominant. Chris, quickly, what about the Queen? What's her future? Well, I can't really see her uh, uh, holding on to the throne for much longer. I will say 1988, she'll make an announcement. Uh, possibly, I would say, after June, uh, that uh, there's wind in the air that she'll possibly settle down within two years. And Charles becomes king. I think there's a good chance. With Diana beside him. I think there's a good chance. And also for you, uh, we prepared a report. This is what... <laughs> a complete <laughs> report for you. It's, all good. Good. It is, actually, it's very, very good. It starts off with uh, uh, the fact that you're tuning into a new phase in your life cycle on the emotional level, and it's going to work out well. Yes, Richard, I, I must uh, confirm there, it's probably one of your toughest emotional years that you're going through, 1988. Now, you've got to distinguish between your professional career and your emotional life next year. Uh, all I can say financially for you, go for it. A great year for contracts, for agreements, uh, any legal matters. It's a great settling year, too. I hope Mr. Uh, Scase is listening. I hope he is. But uh, uh, the fact is that... Um, it's probably one of your better financial years for 12 years, but emotionally a very trying year and professionally a very trying year as well. But it's worth it. Uh, you're going to have a lot of restlessness in 1988, but stick with it. Don't act impulsively and you'll be fine. Thank you. I don't know what to say about that, whether I'm happy or sad. It's not bad, is it? It's not bad. It's, it's uh, a no, very it's critical year yeah. for you. Very good. Thanks for both coming in. I hope you both have a good year. Thank you. <laughs> All right.